Okay, so here we are. This is how everything sits at the moment. Uh, nothing in here is permanently mounted as of yet, except for the uh, the power supply. I didn't want that moving around while I was trying to train all the wires and get them into the right places. But basically I have most of the wiring is finished. Uh, the 24 pin is finished, runs underneath of the motherboard tray that I made. You know, plugs in, that's with uh, the 4 pin EPS cables done. Everything's all individually sleeved and black. Um, I, do, I, I just I still have to sleeve you know the the cable for the rear exhaust fan. This is the Corsair, I believe it's the SP120 or the A, whatever it is. It's the um, the high static pressure one. Uh, I know you want to use more of an airflow one rather than a static pressure one for exhaust. The reason I'm using that is because I got four of them. They were on sale on performance PCs. They're like 25 bucks for a two pack. So I had four, so two for the radiator, and I'm using one is for the exhaust. Uh, the ones on the radiator, these ones are all sleeved, nice and individual. They look nice. Um, the motherboard here, you can see right here, I made this little guy here. So get that out of the way. Um, made this out of acrylic. I painted the inside black. I just had to go over this with some polish. Get rid of some of the uh, sand marks. You can see, ooh, ugly. And then, not so ugly. And then you know you put your, put your power cable back in there. Um, but that's that for the motherboard. Graphics card is up here. I uh, it's gonna sit just about like that. And I have a uh, PCI Express riser that's gonna go underneath and plug into there. So that way you can see the water block, the water block that I'm working on. Um, I've made this here. It's a nice, this neat little table stand-up thing, basically. It's all out of acrylic, bonded together. Um, I painted the underside of it. The top side of it is still clear. I was thinking of drilling some holes in these legs and putting some white LEDs in them, hoping that the... Uh, the white light from them would travel through the legs up to this portion and then with the graphics card on here um, you know it would give this give a nice little white glow coming from underneath of it you know kind of like a little, little aura type thing like a halo effect um, thought that would be really cool moving over to the power supply that's mounted in here all the cables yada 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 uh, the SSD I was going to mount it here However, I went a different route with uh, the reservoir. I made a whole new one. I'm going to get to that in a second. But uh, I got you. I was going to put it here, <clears throat> but now you can't access to the, uh, the things here. So I'm either going to mount that right back here, or maybe here on the side. You know, someplace. It's most likely going to end up back here, so that you can see it. I just got to figure out a way of making those cables look nice and tidy. Um, I haven't decided yet if I wanted to paint this or use this. The uh, SSD comes with this back black cover for it. It's basically got double side tape on it. Tear these off and there it goes right on there. Uh, but obviously this does not match the build. So I might either just paint this and then use this or I might paint this thing all together and then just leave the Intel logo silver. Maybe, the, maybe leave this silver as well. Um, now coming over here to the reservoir. The reservoir, this was a uh, uh, not according to the original plan. The original plan was this one. Now, I have tons of raw footage. I was going to make a video on how to make your own custom reservoir. Uh, let me know down there in the, 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 the comments section if you guys want, to, want me to post a video on how to make your own custom reservoirs. But this was basically the one I was going to use. It was going to sit right here on top of the power supply. It was going to cover up all the stickers so you couldn't see them. Because I'm using black coolant from uh, XSPCs. Um, I'm sorry, XSPC. Um, now the reason that I decided not to do to go away with this one is because when I, I put it all together, and then when I got to drilling the holes for uh, you know for the coolant to come in and exit back out, you can see down here. See if I can focus in a little bit better on that. That's a little bit better. That's how that's how the hole turned out. Well, I didn't realize it, but the uh, the drill press that I was using, the speed wasn't set properly. It was too slow. Um, so basically, it was melting the acrylic, and then it was catching on the bit, 
and then once it built up enough it would just just grab on completely and snap right off so all I <clears throat> so I ended up uh, did that happened on both sides so I took these pieces of um, acrylic bonded them to it to cover them up which I figured you're not gonna see them anyway you know it's kind of a janky way of doing things and it's not the way I would have liked to do it but I did that set the drill speed properly and got the holes all drilled and tapped the right way uh, but the problem was is when I put this when I put these on here it was sitting upside down like this I applied the stuff I use uh, the stuff I use is not glue it's, it's, a, it's called acrylic weld. Basically what it does is it dissolves the surface of the two pieces that you're mating together and bonds them. It's just almost the exact same thing as uh, when you're welding with uh, metal. You're melting the two pieces um, until they melt, they bond together, and you're, put, and you're adding in a filler. That's what the, uh, the welding wire is that comes out of the, uh, that comes out of the handle. And uh, it's basically the same theory that you're doing with this. You're, you're, melting the surface of the two pieces and then you're bonding them both together so there is no leaks it's essentially one piece now um, and it dries completely clear the stuff's like alcohol based you, you can put stuff on you just put it on your fingers and you go like this and it won't do anything it'll just it'll just dissolve and go away I'm sorry uh, evaporate and go away um, but however when I did this I ended up putting too much on and then I put this on and what had happened was it dripped through and ended up leaving this stuff. Basically what you're seeing here, this isn't any type of a residue, this is actually um, dissolved acrylic. The surface of it as the, the drip, it fell through here and began to run this way. And as it was doing it, because it was on there for a certain amount of time, it dissolved the surface of the acrylic so, and discolored it where it was running. So it ended up being completely ugly and unacceptable uh, by basically anyone's standards. You would have obviously seen this because I'm using black coolant, so this would have stood out like a sore thumb. So this got scratched, and I went this and I went this route. Since I'm no longer you know, with the other reservoir, it was going to cover up this. Basically, there was a bunch of dead, empty space in there. So I figured, if I'm making a new reservoir, why don't I utilize this space? So I made this one, this big guy. I cut all my pieces together, or I cut all my pieces out, uh, bonded them together, taped the entire thing off, then I cut the edges off, and I, I laid down some paint to give it this nice structure type look to it, which I think looks really cool. You can see right along here, uh, I had another little incident where the too much dripped through and it ran down. Uh, basically, I was I had it sitting on its side like this, and there was a spot that I had missed, so I just put a little bit of that stuff right in there, and it ended up being too much and ran down but I know it's not really the acceptable thing but I'm accepting it for at least this build anyway it's black cool and it's gonna be in the back if you're gonna be covered up you're not gonna see it um, if this was for a client I would have completely redone the thing uh, but there another thing that I also did was I incorporated the pump directly onto the reservoir um, I'm a big fan of pump and reservoir um, like you know combo units uh, it eliminates the need for two fittings, so there's some cost cut down. It also eliminates the need for a tube running from the reservoir to the pump, so that actually cleans up the aesthetics a little bit better. And it just overall, it just seems like a, a better experience. I've already I hooked up a piece of rubber tubing from here to there. I turned it on. It's great flow, flows right through. Basically, what I did was I drilled a hole in the acrylic and I took. The pump top that I have, which is from Excess PC, you can kind of see in there. And I took the the acrylic weld, covered it up in that, put it on there, taped it on, got all the air bubbles out, and it is perfectly lined up, and it will work wonderfully. Um, basically, this is a, a centrifugal style pump. Basically, what happens is the water flows down in the center of the impeller, and then underneath of that top piece, there it's got the impeller blades it spins and the water comes in the middle while the pump is spinning and it throws it in all directions that's why there's a little bit of a space a gap between the impeller and the pump top itself and basically as it's throwing it out it's building up pressure that pressure has to escape so there's a hole right here right there 
So there's only one way for the water to escape, and that's through here. Uh, these are actually very simple designs. I'm actually going to start manufacturing these myself. Uh, all different colors, all different options. You know, you can have your. You, know, you obviously you can have one input. I'm going to you know, make them for uh, dual pump, dual pump setups, all kinds of stuff. It's going to be great. Keep an eye out on that. Keep an eye out for that. Uh, as you can see, the cables are all individually sleeved, and the Molex. I ended up doing this because, you know, hashtag I hate Molex. Um, but this cleaned it up, that actually cleaned thing up, this cleans up a lot. And now since I'm doing it this way, there's all this dead empty space. Here we are again with the dead empty space. And I'm using the grid from NZXT, which, fit, which fits right underneath of here, absolutely perfectly. So that's a great utilization of space. That sits right back there. You guys can't see that. And then this pump reservoir will sit nice and neat just like that. So now we have your out and you're in. <clears throat> it's going to come out here, come this way, into the reservoir, or I'm sorry, the radiator, out of the radiator, into the water block that I'm working on for this, for the chipset. Then it's going to uh, flow here into the CPU part portion of it exit into the graphics card to cool the VRMs, come through here, the GPU, and then the memory, and then exit, and back into the pump there, or I'm sorry, reservoir. It's going to look really nice. Um, now as far as the water blocks are concerned, I'm working on a couple of designs. Here is actually my first cut. This was the very first one. I had to make a few tweaks. Um, so this isn't the final product. I'm not going to show you guys a final product just yet. But that's basically how it sits. You can see the, uh, you know, the GPU and the opening here isn't quite lined up. This hole isn't. It's just. It's about a half a millimeter too narrow, so it doesn't fit right there. If, it, if this wall, if this graphics card did not have these, this would be so much easier. But basically, it's going to come in here, flow around, cool the GPU exit then into the memory, exit and back to the reservoir. Um, this is just one design that I'm working on. I am working on another design. I have another idea where it would you know, obviously enter here to cool the VRMs and then it would come into here and then I was thinking maybe this entire space here could be completely wide open so the coolant could come into here, here and then just flow through this entire area gathering up all the heat and then exit and out. Be, it would be a really simple design. So I'm going to be doing some testing with that and figure out which one gets the best thermals. Um, uh, I was playing around with you know the conventional giant piece of copper. You mill that out and put some acrylic on top of it, which is this. Um, this was 36 bucks. It's big, it's heavy, and apparently copper is pretty difficult to mill. Um, because copper gets gummy as you're milling it and it heats up. You can see right down in here, I actually broke a bit cutting this out. This is just the edge here. It was supposed to accommodate for the, uh, the power cables. And I broke a bit in here and I tried a bigger bit and slower feed rates, but it kept jumping and skipping. Copper apparently gets very gummy and it gets stuck in your bit and it heats up and that's when you get that stuck skipping and stuttering and possibly even breaking a bit. Bits are actually very expensive. The I had that, that was a when I was doing this and broke, that was thirty dollars. Thirty bucks for one end mill. So yeah, that's that's how that's turning out. So I decided to scrap this idea for now because my CNC machine is not set up for any type of uh, you know flood cooling flood coolant system to keep everything nice and cool. So I put this on the back burner for now. And what I was thinking with this design is, say, you have the acrylic where the copper, where the water would flow, and then in this section you would have a piece of copper underneath. GPU would have a piece of copper underneath, and then under the memory there would be a piece of copper underneath, all coming up into the water jackets uh, where the water could grab the heat and take it away. So what that would end up doing is cut, cut production costs down, uh, keep the weight down 
and the aesthetics would be essentially the same, even though, you know, most graphics cards are, you know, they're sitting like this anyway, so this is what you're looking at, and, you know, basically the edge of your graphic, of your water block sticking out like that. However, I'm putting the, having this oriented so that, <clears throat> so that way the water block is on display and you can see it. Um, and I guess that's it for the water, oh, one other th ups, uh, update here. I was using a dual core, uh, just an Intel CPU, I think, I believe it was the G2830, something like that. Um, but I actually got this thing updated, upgraded. I was able to score my old Asus P8 P67 Pro motherboard and this i7-2600K for a hundred bucks. So, go me. Um, obviously there's not going to be very much headroom for overclocking, basically, you know, because it's a four pin connector here, so there's not going to be very much headroom for, you know, increasing voltage to us, so I don't know how as far as we're going to do is get us overclocking. Um, but if we can at least get some so we can stretch the custom water blocks that I'm working on, overclock this so we can stretch that, and we can get our, you know, we can get our thermals. I might even add another radiator back there. I'm not quite sure yet but I might. Um, as far as the front, I put this hole here. This is for the power switch. I'm not using a reset switch. I'm not a big fan of reset switches. I've never used them. This Vandal switch I got is capable of you know power and reset. Plus it also has this nice white LED ring that's going to go around it. Uh, I wired that in and I sleeved it. Now here's a neat little trick for everybody that hates those front I.O. connectors. Um, they plug in right here to this guy here. Now I'm only using power LED and a power switch. Now, those just so happen to be these four pins right next to each other. So what I did, I learned this trick from uh, another builder on YouTube, um, Singularity Computers. If you guys haven't checked him out, go find his, go find his channel and, uh, you know, he's got some really crazy stuff on there. So I unpinned the individual ones, and I repinned them into a USB header. So that's the four right there. They're actually, it's actually very easy. You just get like a pin or something, or a, a, a paper clip. You push down on the release, and it, the pin just pops right out. And then you can pop them right, right into one of these. So it essentially just sits and goes like that. Nice, clean, and simple. You don't have those little guys where you're like, oh my god, is this one plugged in? Is this one plugged in? Nope, they're all plugged in. And then I, uh, you know, sleeve cable, made it all nice and neat looking. That's going to go right up in here, like that. And then this is going to plug right into there. Clean and simple. Uh, I believe that is going to sum it up for this for now. Uh, to make sure you stay subscribed, keep an eye out, water blocks are coming, hopefully it'll be in the next video, um, and I guess that's about it, so have a good day, and down out.